Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me here today, as always. I am doing today's video down in the podcast room, so we'll see how it works out. It's kind of cold down here, and it's a little noisier if the kids get to moving around. So we're going to try it and see how it works. I like the lighting better, and of course the background is a little better. I was going to talk about the Ukraine and the news media. Oh my God, they're gonna to try to scare you to death. Why do they want you afraid? Why do you think it is? Why does the media want you afraid? And there's a dog on the table. <laughs> but he went the other way, thank God. But here he comes again. Come here, dog, let's get you off here. Ah, oh, he hit the camera. Go, go. I should have locked them up first, but I didn't. So we're going to press on here. Hopefully I can get this done. All right, they want you afraid because they want you to watch the next episode of the news. If they can get you afraid to get you to thinking, oh my God, what's gonna happen next? They'll be talking about nuclear war and et cetera, et cetera. I have two friends over there right now. Yeah, things aren't good, but they're not too worried about it. But they blow things up. They've been fighting over there since I was over there back five or six years ago. Over in Crema, the airport was completely destroyed back then. So it's not like this just started happening yesterday. They may have increased it a little bit, but then again, I have a tendency to think that maybe the news media has increased their focus on it. They're trying to make it into something that, they're trying to make it into something big. They want you to be afraid, as I said. I'll tell you this, back when I was a kid, it's like they want you to hate uh, maybe Putin. Putin, I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly. When I was a kid, in the first grade, I said this yesterday, I think, they showed us a film of this ominous looking Russian guy. Because back then, communists were like, oh, the communists are like devils, they were evil. They weren't even human beings. That's the way they were portrayed to us in school. As kids, five and six years old, like these people were out to get us. They showed us this film of this ominous looking Russian guy. And he said, we will take over the US without ever firing a shot. And of course I grew up during the time of the nuclear war, uh, shortly before, no, when I was born, they had the missiles aimed at the US. So I grew up in that fear, the missiles in Cuba, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, I think it was called. And so I grew up during that duck and cover that any minute now the world was going to go into a, uh, a holocaust of nuclear fusion, that we were going to destroy the world. Many times in my life, even until I, until I was 21, I was thinking, what's the point? They're gonna blow the world up anyway. Well, here I am, 61, 40 some years later. Nothing's happened yet. Yes, it could, it might. But what I'm telling you is, there's not a damn thing you can do about it. And if you sit there and watch the news, you're not getting the truth anyway. It's so distorted to make it into more dram dramatic than it is to get you afraid because they want the ratings. They want you to watch. Now, maybe you think you have to be informed. I'm telling you what, what you need to know will come to you. You will hear it because I don't watch the news. Occasionally I make the mistake of clicking on one of those YouTube clips of Fox News or whatever news it happens to be. And it doesn't do anything for me except me getting to get me to thinking negative. And as I said, you don't know how much of it is true. I can't tell you what percentage is true and what's not true. But once again, their agenda is to get you to watch the news. People love horror movies because it makes them afraid. The news is almost like a horror movie. When was the last time you heard of something wonderful happening in the world? They would have you think that nothing ever good happens in the world, but it does, but you have to look for that. They're constantly pushing the negativity. The news should not be called news, it should be called negativity. They're constantly pushing all the terrible, horrendous, terrible things, horrific things that are happening in the world today. You would think there's not an ounce of good in the world, but there is, there's more than an ounce of good in the world. There's a lot of good, loving, caring, uh, generous things going on every day. It just doesn't make the news. A psychological principle is whatever you focus on grows. Guess what? If you're focusing on that negativity, on all the terrible things that's happening in your world, that will bring that type of a world to you. You will start experiencing terrible things. 
Maybe your boss will be a jerk at work. Maybe you have a flat tire, your car will break down. But if you focus on all those terrible things, you will bring terrible things into your life. Whatever you focus on grows in your experience, a psychological principle. You don't have to believe in the woo-woo of, uh, of law of attraction or anything like that. But it's just a scientific principle. Whatever you focus on grows. So what do you wanna focus on? Do you wanna focus on the negativity? If you don't, shut off the news. Put things into your mind that are going to help you. Things into your mind that you're thinking about, whatever is love, whatever is lovely, whatever is just, whatever is true, think on these things and you will bring those things into your life. What are you thinking about? Very important to think about what you're thinking about. Take time to ponder what you're thinking about. What are your dominant thoughts during the day? What are they? You can change them because whatever you dominantly think about, you bring about. That's just the way life works. Listen to people, listen to what people say. From the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. I'm not a religious guy, but in some of these old religious books, the religions of, of all different kinds, there are many, many words of wisdom in there because people have learned these things throughout the centuries. Watch people, watch what they say. Listen to what wealthy people talk about. Listen to what poor people talk about. Listen to what those in between talk about. The wealthy are usually talking about where they want to go. The in between are talking about where they are and where they would like to go. The poor people are talking about where they are and where they're going to stay, how they're going to make it, how they're going to pay the rent. There's never enough money, we can't afford that. Money doesn't grow on trees, we aren't the Rockefellers. Ad infinitum, their thoughts are constantly on lack and they create and draw more lack into their life. As of where the wealthy are constantly focusing on abundance, what they're going to bring into their life more, more. They don't talk about they can't afford it. They say things like, I don't have that in the budget right now. Maybe we'll get that later. They can afford it because they have the money or they can afford it because they believe they can afford it. Think about that. Are you poor because you're poor? Or are you poor because you have a poverty mentality? If there's lack in your life, there's lack in your mind. I've experienced lack. I'm lacking a little bit right now on available cash because the work slowed down a little bit and I have money invested in several things, but I don't have available cash. So it kind of gets me in a little bit of a spot. But so what am I focusing on? Am I focusing on that or am I focusing on what I desire? I must focus on what I desire because I want to bring more of that into my life, not the opposite of that, which is lack. Lack is created in the minds of men. There is no lack in the world. Are there a lack of leaves on the trees? Well, in the wintertime there is. Is there a lack of grass on the ground? Is there a lack of oil? No. Is there a lack of food in the world? No, there isn't. If you live in the U.S., we throw enough food away every day to feed probably the rest of the world. We have so many people, what is it? 70% of the people in the U.S. are obese or overweight or obese. Is that lack? No, but then we have people starving in the world. So is there lack in the world? No, man has created lack through his greed. And we will always have the poor. They will always be with us. I'm not sure how we'll solve that until people become more how do I say, unity conscious, maybe? Um, we're always going to have lack. We will, we will never have peace in the world till everyone has peace within themselves. If you want to make the world a better place or a place of less lack, get rid of the lack within yourself. Make yourself better. And then it will expand out into the world. Everyone wants to change the world, but few people want to change themselves but we must start within ourselves. You want to change your outer world, change your inner self. Check out the Inner Game Healing Summit at uh, Modern Life Dating. John is putting this on. It is a good, a good uh, avenue for you to change yourself. It's a small investment. To invest in yourself is the best investment. Why not? Aren't you a good investment? Are you? 
If you're not a good investment, then what is? Invest in yourself. Jim Rohn said, well, how did, what did he say? I don't know the quote exactly, but he said, if you work harder on yourself than you do on your job, you will never lack for anything because everything emanates from within you. It doesn't come from out there inside you. It emanates from within you, from within your consciousness. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe you deserve it. You have to look in the mirror and say, I love you. I like you, man, you deserve the best and know that you do. If you can say that in the mirror and feel comfortable with that, then you're okay. But if you feel stupid or silly or like you're lying to yourself, then you have some inner work to do. Work on yourself. Take an inventory of yourself. What is inside of you? When you look in the mirror, do you hate what you see? You think it's your physical appearance? Maybe it is, but your physical appearance is a lot of times a representation of what's going on inside of you. Are you overweight? Are you too skinny? You don't like your body? I say it's something inside of you manifesting itself as your body. I used to look in the mirror and thought, man, I'm, I'm too thin here. I need to gain more weight there. I'm too fat there. It wasn't that at all. It was the garbage, the guilt, the shame, the remorse, the regret. That was what was inside of me that I was seeing. That was the reflection that was reflecting back to me. When I got all that crap out of me, now I like what I see. I'm 61 now and I don't feel as old when I look at myself as I did when I was 27. Because when I was 27, I was very selfish. I used people, I took advantage of people. In my personal relationships, not so much in business, but in my personal relationships, I did. You cannot do t anything to or for anyone without doing that to or for yourself and it comes back multiplied. And I reap the, uh, the consequences of my actions. Now I try to help people and I reap the benefits of my actions. Because by helping you or helping anyone else, I'm helping myself multiplied. It comes back to me the same as the uh, selfish uh, actions that I took in my youth. So I learned because of the pain and the suffering I went through because of all the people I hurt. I ended up by myself one night in my apartment. Miserable. Just got done looking in the mirror and I hated what I saw. What I saw was what was inside of me. And I walked away into the bedroom and I thought to myself, here you are, Mark, all by yourself. And you know why? Because that's all you've ever thought of was yourself. And that was kind of an epiphany for me, a rather miserable one, but an epiphany. And from that day on, I, I decided I needed to do something different. And it's been a slow process, but we're all evolving. Just try to be better than you were yesterday. Don't try to be better than Joe or Bill or Bob or Pete or Sue. Just try to be a little bit better tomorrow than you were today. That is success. Like Earl Nightingale said, success is a progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. It's not when you get there, it's the successive progressive realization. You're moving in that direction. That is success, not the destination, but it's the progressive, progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal, something worthy. Find a vision, find a goal, find a purpose for your life and pursue that with all your vigor. And you will find a fulfillment that you never knew existed, a fulfillment you can't get from a fast car, a hot woman, a winning a race, winning an event or whatever. That's where it comes from, at least for men. That's where your fulfillment comes from. No matter how many girls you sleep with, how much money you make, how much fame you get, it's not going to fulfill you as much as the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. Not that I'm saying those things aren't worthy. Well, maybe some of them aren't too worthy. <laughs> but you get the picture. Okay? All right, well, this worked out okay, except for the dog up on the table. Uh, if you'd like to get my help personally, MarksInspiration.com is my website. Hit that like button now and subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to donate, if you feel like this has been of value to you, uh, hit the PayPal donate button, a dollar, two dollars, whatever you think the, the value of this is worth to you. Uh, share it with a friend if you think it will help them. 
Uh, we got the podcast uh, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to go, man. I guess that's it. Uh, thanks for joining me, and thank you for my 1,334 subscribers. You're the reason I'm here. Have a good day.